It's a hallmark of YouTubers to begin every video by over-exaggerating everything. Like, I could easily start every video like, THIS IS THE BIGGEST TRAIN EVER! But for this video, my friends, I am here to tell you, THIS IS THE BIGGEST TRAIN EVER! Maybe not ever, but this has gotta be one of the biggest trades, if not the biggest trade of the salary cap era. Because the Calgary Flames trade Matthew Kachuk and a conditional fourth round pick. You can't forget the conditional fourth round pick. To the Florida Panthers. In exchange, the Calgary Flames acquire Jonathan Huberdo, defenseman Mackenzie Weger, forward prospect Cole Schwint, and a conditional, you can't forget the conditional, first round pick in 2025. Now if you're one of those people who doesn't know how to feel until you know the conditions, someone tell me how to feel! From Cap Friendly, bless Cap Friendly, the fourth round pick trade condition. If the 2025 first round pick that Florida sent to Calgary is a lottery pick, that results in Calgary receiving Florida's 2026 first round pick instead, then the 2025 fourth round pick that Calgary sent to Florida would also slide to 2026. For those of you keeping score at home, we just had the 2022 draft, which means we still have the 2023, 2024, and then 2025 is when the Flames might pick in the first round or it could slide to 2026. Four drafts from now. I said it out loud and I had to go one, two, three. Okay, yeah, yeah. And wait, we're not even done. As part of the trade, Matthew Kachuk signs an eight year extension to stay in Florida. And that's big because that's basically the whole reason he was traded is he wouldn't sign long term in Calgary. His eight year extension will pay him 9.5 million dollars for the next uh, most of a decade. And that still only makes Matthew Kachuk the second highest paid forward on the Florida Panthers because Alexander Barkov makes 10. Now a lot of people raise their eyes because at face value, would you rather have Matthew Kachuk or Jonathan Huberdeau, Mackenzie Weger, and a first round pick, and then Cole Schwint, I mean, if he turns into something that, that seems to be the cherry on top. Because Matthew Kachuk finished eighth in NHL scoring this past season with 104 points. And what's wild about that is Jonathan Huberdeau finished second in NHL scoring with 115 points. Well, actually he was tied for second with Johnny Gaudreau. We'll get back to that in a moment. So Matthew Kachuk, like burgeoning superstar in this league, over 100 points, he had over 40 goals, he's just not kind to play against. I, th I think that's putting it gently. But in Jonathan Huberdeau, you have undeniably one of the most explosive offensive talents in the entire National Hockey League. And on top of that, you also acquire Mackenzie Weger, who is probably a top pair defenseman on most teams and might be the best defenseman that Calgary has. And on top of that, you get a prospect and a first round pick? That seems like incredible value for Calgary, doesn't it? Well, there is a catch. This upcoming season, Jonathan Huberdeau is going to make $5.9 million against the cap. Tremendous value for Calgary. This upcoming season, Mackenzie Weger is going to make $3.25 million against the cap. Tremendous value for Calgary. In fact, Mackenzie Weger is Calgary's fourth highest paid defender. Here's the catch though, and it's a big one. Both Mackenzie Weger and Jonathan Huberdeau are UFAs, unrestricted free agents, at the end of this upcoming season. Now who knows, if uh, within a few hours, you know, maybe by the time you see this video or within a few days, the Flames manage to get Uyghur and or Huberto signed to extensions, then that little catch flies out the window. We don't have to worry about it. But this is a huge consideration for Brad True Living going forward because Basically, the whole reason this Kachuk trade was facilitated is he wasn't going to stay in Calgary long term. He told them as much. And he gave Calgary a relatively short list of teams that he would like to sign long term with. And by the way, considering that, that the Flames only had X amount of trade partners to work with, Huberto and Uyghur and a first, like that's really, really good value considering the circumstances. But at the end of this upcoming season, the Florida Panthers could still have Matthew Kachuk, and then the Flames could potentially lose Huberto and Uyghur for nothing. They'll still have the first round pick in three years, and they'll have Cole Schwint, who's a uh, third round pick from 2019. He 
could be something. But if this trade ends up being Matthew Kachuk for one year of Huberto, one year of Uyghur, a conditional first round pick, and who knows where in the first round that first round pick ends up, and a prospect who may or may not even work out, all of a sudden it doesn't look that great for Calgary. So Calgary still has a lot of work left to do, but that's the exciting part if I'm a Flames fan. And, and anxiety inducing, but exciting. But what's the work left to do? Signing Huberto to an extension? Well, yeah. Signing Uyghur to an extension? Well, yeah. But how about this? According to capfriendly.com, the Calgary Flames have exactly $9.3 million in cap space for this upcoming season. Now, right now, the Flames have Sean Monaghan, who's making just under $6.4 million against the cap on long-term injured reserve. Even if he came back fresh as a daisy at the beginning of the season, the Flames would still have quite a considerable amount of wiggle room to play with. Ooh, and they can use that wiggle room to sign free agents? Well, they could, but I draw your attention to this. Once again on Cap Friendly, because Cap Friendly, Cap Friendly. Here's the Flames decor right now. Noah Hannafin, $4.95 million. Rasmus Anderson, $4.55 million. Chris Tanev, $4.5 million. Nikita Zadorov, $3.75 million. Mackenzie Weger, $3.25 million. I was wrong, he's fifth, he's not even fourth. And then Yusuf Valamaki, $1.55 million. They also have Nicholas Malash. They have Connor McKay, Dennis Gilbert. Oliver Shillington still needs a deal. After all that, Oliver Shillington is still a restricted free agent without a contract. And of course, the Flames have only nine forwards listed on the cap friendly page. There's a move to be made here, maybe more than one. Even if you consider like, oh yeah, it's good to have depth. The Flames have too many guys on D and not enough up front. You can easily look at the free agent market and go, okay, well, Nazem Kadri still hasn't signed and that seems like a perfect fit. And I agree with you, Naz, that's a great fit. Here's the problem. People always say about their GM, why didn't they go out and sign this guy? Well, they probably tried. We already know the Calgary Flames tried to trade for Nazem Kadri a few years ago. The Leafs offered Nazem Kadri to him. Kadri was the one who said no to the deal. Can people change? Absolutely. If I found out I was going to play with Jonathan Huberdeau, I might change as well. But if he doesn't want to go, he doesn't want to go. And you got to get creative and you got to go into the trade market and... Do you think there are some NHL teams out there who could use a little bit of defense? Yeah, I think so. But the sooner Brad Treliving can come up with some answers, the sooner he'll have a uh, peace. Because either the Uyghur and Huberto contract extension talks are gonna hang over the flames all season, or they're gonna get them done, or there's gonna be one or potentially two massive mid-season deals. Like, let's say things don't go the flames way this season and they end up a seller at the deadline. Well, first of all, Brad Treliving might not be the one making those trades because he might be fired. But whoever is in charge will be able to, at the trade deadline when NHL GMs become silly geese, trade Mackenzie Weger and Jonathan Huberto on the cheap. Can you imagine what a team desperate to win in the playoffs would pay for those guys, either of those guys, at the deadline. But I mean, Calgary's coming off a season where they just won their division. Even though they lost Johnny Gaudreau and they had to go through this with Matthew Kachuk, do you think they're in selling mode? I don't. Wrapping it up with the Calgary Flames, it's impossible to not include Johnny Gaudreau in this conversation because he's kind of where the Flames off season started and not on a good foot because they lost him for nothing to the Columbus Blue Jackets, which was unexpected. And the Flames, who had one of the best lines in hockey last season, certainly one of the best lines at five on five, with Gaudreau, who's gone, Kachuk, who's gone, and Elias Lindholm, he's still there, two thirds of that line are gone. Now they've done a great job to replace Kachuk with Huberto at very least, but there's still a big hole that Johnny Gaudreau left. Lots and lots of questions with the Calgary Flames. I think they're going to be the team of the summer, the team to watch because my goodness, they got a lot of work to do. Un unless, I don't know, like, are they gonna sign, like, can Uyghur play the wing? He can play both sides on D, maybe he can play wing as well, maybe center. The Flames could go into the bargain bin on free agency for forwards and still have a whack of cap space left fascinating, fascinating team. Like we look at the Columbus Blue Jackets and the trade they made with Seattle, getting rid of Oliver Bjorkstrand for a third and fourth round pick. That dude had 28 goals last season. That was Seattle weaponizing their cap space to take advantage of a team that 
didn't really have any. Like a third and a fourth for Bjorkstrand, who's a good player locked up to term at a reasonable hit. Like, that's a horrible trade in terms of value for the Blue Jackets. Look at the Flames, who have more cap space than Seattle, due to another team around the NHL who's desperate to get under the cap. Speaking of desperate to get under the cap, the Florida Panthers, who, again, according to Cap Friendly, are about $3.4 million over the cap. Now it's the summer, you're allowed to be a little over the cap right now, uh, so they're fine for now, but now there's a ticking clock to get underneath that cap. And so much happens around the draft and so much happens around free agency that I think we forget little things that are whispered into our ear. One of the things that was whispered into the hockey world was the Panthers were shopping Sergei Bobrovsky. What does a Sergei Bobrovsky trade in 2022 look like? Now, far more likely and far more reasonably, the Florida Panthers have Patrick Hornquist, who has a modified no-trade clause, he's 35, he's only got one year left, 5.3 mil. Could Florida flip him to a team with a ton of cap space who's not really interested in competing this year? Ar Arizona, I'm talking about Arizona. Doesn't have to be Arizona, but we're all thinking Arizona. Could they sweeten the pot to send Hornquist to a team like that and then a team like that flips him to a contender at the deadline. That's probably what ends up happening. But there's another team with Florida who, wow, has some work to do. Oh, and anyone who cheers for an Atlantic Division team, both Kachuk brothers are in the Atlantic Division. Brady and Matthew are divisional rivals now. <laughs> By the way, for those of you wondering, the Kachuk brothers have a combined cap hit annually of $17,705,714. Keith. Sir. Now here's gonna be the most exciting thing to watch over the next season because I think a lot of Flames fans had their eyes on, well, how is Johnny Gaudreau gonna do in Columbus and who is gonna play center for Johnny Gaudreau? And that is exciting and it is something to watch on the out of town scoreboard when the Flames aren't on. But how about this? How is Huberto gonna do with, I assume, Elias Lindholm? And how is Matthew Kachuk gonna do with, I assume, Alexander Barkov. Because Huberto goes to Elias Lindholm, who was in the Selkie conversation last season, but Matthew Kachuk goes to Alexander Barkov, who's always in the Selkie conversation. Dude, this is two players who scored over 100 points last season being traded for each other in 2022. That, that's not supposed to happen. And it did, and it's brilliant. So let me ask you something for the comments section. Who won? If you want my cop-out answer, it's impossible to say yet. Now that's usually the case when it comes to a trade. Oh, well, you never really know until they hit the ice. It's technically true. But in this case, I think the Flames clearly get great value for Matthew Kachuk, but if they are not able to re-sign Huberto and or Uyghur, it's gonna be a big problem for them and it could be a rebuild. Hilarious. We were all sitting here waiting for the offseason and free agency to wrap up. Friends, I think we're just getting started. So, again, what do you think? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell your friends two 100 point players were traded for each other in the in 2022.